Ghostbusters. It's one of the best films ever made, and for good reason. This movie has everything. Comedy, horror, action, romance, and some of the finest practical effects ever committed to celluloid. Not to mention one of the most memorable theme songs ever performed. On top of that, it spawned my favorite animated series, the real Ghostbusters. I won't deny that the show kind of lost its soul towards the end, opting to focus more on Slimer and his childish antics, but those early seasons were brilliant television. They were entertaining as hell and taught us the importance of human life as well as right and wrong. You mean declare evil the losers for cheating? Yeah, that's the basic idea. But evil cheats. That's its nature. It does whatever unscrupulous or immoral thing it has to to win. That's why we call them evil. Only good is not allowed to cheat. If good adopts the ways of evil, it becomes evil. So if good cheats, evil automatically wins. Got it? Label! Anyway, growing up, I had two great games to choose from, one for the Master System and one on Genesis. While they share the same name, they're two entirely different games. I'm going to start with the Master System here. Yeah, who are you going to call? Your mama. Designed by David Crane of Pitfall fame, this Ghostbusters is an action slash strategy game, for the most part. Like the movie, you've just started a new business and you're given 10 grand at the start for whatever equipment you may need. Surprisingly, you have four cars to choose from. The hearse is the balanced choice and it actually looks like the Ecto-1, so... Yeah, you're always going to choose the hearse, let's face it. Once you buy the car, it's time to grab your gear. Most of the items are self-explanatory, like the ghost traps and PK energy detector, but you'll be reaching for the instructions when you come across stuff like ghost vacuum and defensive wall. No, really? A wall? What good is a wall against a ghost? The instructions are a real trip. Yes, everyone knows about Gorza and how stupid that is, but how about Master of the Key here? I mean, look at him, he's like, BIG HUGS! Okay, so you get your gear and shit, then it's off to the map screen where you basically plan your route. It's like a GPS where you look for a flashing building, meaning you have a call, then move to its location, hitting the action button, which will take you to a driving stage. Here, the player must avoid cars and cement mixers for however long it takes you to reach the destination. Upon arrival, you bust some ghosts. Two Ghostbusters are at your disposal, both of which you can control, making it that much easier to corral these focused, non-terminal repeating phantasms toward the trap. Catch them all, you're a few hundred dollars richer, and on to the next one. Simple enough, right? And well, not, not quite. The game isn't hard, but it does demand your attention. First of all, money is very, very important. If you don't have at least 10 grand in the purse, you can't enter the Zool and fight Gozer. So you gotta bust as many ghosts as possible in a short amount of time. Yeah, I forgot to mention, there's a time limit. Hooray! The city's paranormal activity is monitored here. No, not that kind. There are three phases, blue, yellow, and red. This acts as your time limit. If you've earned enough cash once the meter tops out, you'll enter the Zool. If you don't, the game's over, so you better move your ass. Because of this, it's essential that you plan the shortest route to your next bust while avoiding these two in the process. That's the key master and gatekeeper. If you touch them, they'll take your money faster than three kids in a mortgage. Another thing you need to look out for is when these roamers converge, forming Stay Puffed. It's fun to watch, certainly, but the destruction that ensues will cost you, yes, you, four big ones. Fortunately, you can avoid this by dropping some of that ghost bait. Thank God, because it's an easy two grand for saving the building. Trust me, you will need it. Also, you can suck up whatever ghouls you touch on the map screen during the driving stage. So long as you have the ghost vacuum, that is. Don't have one? No worries, you can always revisit the shop when the need arises. You see, there is some strategy to this. Some may find it a little tedious, but I dig it. The real challenge for me is when I enter the Zool. First, you have to get two of your Ghostbusters past Stay Puffed, but that's the easy part. Next, we have the stairwell. You gotta climb six flights while avoiding and or blasting roamers, slimers, and these dish-throwing sacks of ectoplasm. My god, they're the worst. I mean, just look at this. They practically showered the screen with Corel before you can get a shot off. On the plus side, only one of your Ghostbusters needs to reach the top. 
Finally, there's Gozer and the Terror Dogs. This is a pain in the ass. Gozer has a punishing spread shot and those damn dogs spit fireballs. What pisses me off about this is that not only do I have to deal with an energy bar for both Gozer and my proton pack, yeah, I can only fire so many shots, but it's one hit kills. Oh, it gets better, check this out. This prehistoric cunt's life bar is replenished whenever I die. It doesn't matter if I land a few hits beforehand, I've no choice but to bust this bitch in one perfect run. How is that fair? As much as it irritates the shit out of me, I'll play this as many as six times in a row before I get so frustrated that I rage quit. The game must be doing something right if I keep coming back for more. When you die here, you're given a code where you'll continue with all the money you made prior, making each subsequent try that much easier. Honestly, I feel the gameplay's solid. It's addictive and fun to play, and that's all I really care about. But, wait, okay, that's not entirely true. Graphics and sound may not be everything, but they do matter. Thankfully, the Master System does not disappoint. Everything is well-defined, good use of color, and animation's pretty smooth. There's a bit of lag when there's a lot of specters on screen at once, though it's acceptable. The sound is good. It oozes 8-bit charm whenever I fire my proton pack or open the trap. Come on, that's awesome! As for the music, except for the Game Over screens, the Ghostbusters theme is the only song heard throughout. While I'd love to hear something like an 8-bit rendition of Venkman's theme in the shop, I'm okay with this. Really, it has a lot of energy and it suits the gameplay. At least it's Ghostbusters. I mean, can you imagine if they made a game based on James Cameron's Titanic and the only song you heard was My Heart Will Go On? Oh yeah, I can tell you where that shit would end up. As far as I'm concerned, this is a good game. Is it the best ever made? No. Is it fun? Absolutely. I'd recommend this one for any Master System owner, whether they're fans of the series or not. Now the Genesis game... Oh, let's heat them up. <laughs> 